Hey everyone, this is Keith Kiley and Dean Dittenberg, and you're here with the Playing Through Podcast, sponsored by Move Faster Golf. If you're wondering what Move Faster Golf is or how to become an official MFer, listen to our Playing Through Podcast to find out. Okay, everybody, welcome back to Playing Through, sponsored by Move Faster Golf. Welcome, MFers. Welcome back. Hey, so today, this little episode, we're going to talk about handicaps. So, what handicap. the hell is a handicap? And how are they devised? So we're gonna we're gonna lean on our, our teaching pro today a little bit <laughs> yeah, to talk sure. to us about handicaps. Who knows all my, my thing about handicaps is I like to bitch about them a lot when I played in any type <laughs> of handicap or net tournament. Besides Dino's swing and his looks being a handicap, <laughs> a handicap is basically like think of a bowling average. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean handicap. So if a par is seventy two, for example, for the beginning people who don't know much about handicaps, if a if a par for a golf course is 72 and let's just say you shoot 20 over consistently yep so that be you would be a 92 shooter your handicap considerably would be about a 20 but for example yep. but the d- difference between handicaps handicap is in the scoring average like a bowling average can be mm-hmm. handicap is your potential that's what people understand it's not yep. a scoring average for example if you were a 20 handicap or if i'm sorry if you shot 20 over quite regularly yeah your handicap might be more like a 17 or yeah. 16 maybe mm-hmm. people don't realize so the handicap system is devised to where it's semi based off an average but it's always it's ba- a handicap is your potential it's yep. supposed to be you're only supposed yeah. to meet your handicap and hit your handicap like one out of every four or five times so, so that's that's the one thing people i think have a hard time understanding is yes this isn't something you do all the time this isn't your every round you're gonna oh, go hell hit. no this is a potential yes this is what your potential is so a little different from you think, oh, I'm if you're a 10 handicap that you're going to go out and hit this score every single time. No, that's what your potential to hit yeah. is because it doesn't normally happen. And you know how many 10 handicaps are 12? So if you're a 10 handicap, a par 72, you'd be shooting, that'd be an 82. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden they roll in with a 77 or 78. It's like, oh, and then all of a sudden their, their <laughs> score is blown out of the water. And in that event, it's like, you know, and I think the stats out there for somebody to beat their handicaps by three or more strokes. And this is for a handicap golfer, meaning... This is for a player who records a handicap, which is a little different category for just your yep. weekend warrior that doesn't ever, you know, record scores and that type sure. of thing. But for you to beat your handicap by three strokes or more is like one in 20 or so. It's like 5% maybe. 5% of the time. But you know how many net tournaments and handicap tournaments I've played in that multiple guys do more than three <laughs> strokes? <laughs> a <laughs> so lot. It's like, yeah. It's just, <laughs> so the handicap system, the problem with the handicap system is you know, they have like, different recordable you can record it right on your phone these days and yep. like we're from michigan you know regam was a you know a golf association of michigan had their app but now it's again it's uh, i don't even know what gin stands for I exactly but it's more of a national type of recording of your scores and it keeps your handicap but that being said i could go out and if it's a par 72 i could shoot a par 72 or i can shoot a 75 or an 80 i can record anything i want into that yeah. Into that system, into that software, into yeah. that app. So that's a handicap system has to be a little bit about honor system too. It's like you might well, show up with a, a legit handicap that's sure. registered that you have so many rounds in. Yeah. But you still plug those to scores yeah. in yourself. It's, well, you don't have to be honest about it. I mean, it's kind of like the rest of the game of golf, right? I mean, there's there's some uh, you, you got there's some honor in it. You oh know, yeah. The things that you can do on a golf course. How many times have we seen people just make small adjustments, whatever, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, it'd be like, I mean, that the handicaps like that, it's like, and it's probably, and the lower your handicap goes, and I say, and this is maybe biased to this, it's a little bit harder to kind of consistently hit your handicap because sure. there's just so much, when you're higher handicap, there's so much more room for like improvement and that yeah. stuff and stuff. But it'd be like, if I had a 140 bowling average and I show up to a bowling tournament, I was like, wow, I bowled a 220. <laughs> well, that's hard to believe, but just must have been on today. That's how I hear that a lot on the golf course. It's ridiculous. Yeah. But Well, I think you made that comment earlier about, uh, you know, going to like outings and stuff. Um, I know in a lot of the outings I get, it's not the low handicap golfers that win those outings. <laughs> right, exactly. It's just, it's just um, when you have to compete against uh, folks, I mean, and, and again, it's had outings where I've gone and three of the four guys on it are 30 handicappers. I mean, that's what they yeah. come in with. Yep. If that's pretty tough to beat when you're giving, <laughs> it is. You're giving that all up. Well, and handicaps too is like, I mean, it's all relative to par. So sure. like I said, oh, gotcha. you know, par being yeah. 72, yep. if you shoot your eight over mm-hmm. and you shoot 80 in your handicap, you would think it might be an average of eight. It might be a, say a five or six. Five or six. Yep. But that being <laughs> said, it's like, so 
handicaps work and like there's your number but also like if you ever heard the term you know for anybody beginning out there scratch golfer means yeah. you're a zero handicap that means you're or plus side i mean we yep. have players i've been on the plus side for briefly for a couple of years back mm -hmm. in the day when i was playing all the time so a plus if you're a plus one or plus two handicap that means you're breaking par. Breaking par. That's just, yeah. so it's like, it's nuts. I mean, there's so, so many different yes. levels to it. So when, when you see the plus number, I think a lot of people just think, oh, that they are like a, a two yeah, handicap. Yeah, exactly. No. When you see a plus in front of somebody's hand, damn that means they're dropping below the par level. Yeah, that's a damn good player. Yeah. So it's the thing so about you trying to say you're a damn, you were a damn good player? Is that what you're The older I get, the better I used to be. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Well, I used I to can, hit it this far. I used to shoot this. I used to do that. I, um, oh, I know. I can honestly tell you, I've never seen a plus. There would be no plus in front of my handicap. It <laughs> will not happen. Not anytime soon. Ever. Never. Work with me for a couple more lessons. I think I can get you there. It's going to cost you about ten grand. Yeah. We can get you there. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So literally. So and when when it comes crazy, like uh, talk about handicaps, like we actually read some stats and stuff for. So like if you it's actually re if you record your handicap, for example, that means maybe you do it for a league or you're playing a tournament or just in general you just yeah. record it just for whatever <clears throat> out of the handicap golfers out there so these are the players that record a handicap yep so, and then there's you you got a whole other collection that people don't even record their scores whatever there might be yeah. you know call them weekend warriors or just sure. play sure. once here and there out of the handicap golfers only 10 percent break 80 mm -hmm. and it's like i think 49 percent break 90 mm -hmm. and 86 of them can break 100 but that's out of the i mean that's crazy i mean only 10 percent break an 80 out of the handicap golfers that's still even it's even honestly a little higher than i thought I, that's again this is when you hear people tell you oh i break 80 all the time it's yeah and we and again remember some of this is course dependency i mean i, high I mean that. you know conditions uh, weather sure. i mean game. there are things that could help you obviously you know have those outlier days but i mean i know there are very few people you know they keep a card if they get under 80. You yeah, know, like that's right, yeah. that's like a yeah. major accomplishment yes. mm -hmm. for for a, a guy. Yeah, hundred I mean, percent. That that's a big accomplishment. Now you broke. Did you break eighty for the first time in Scotland? I hit eighty. Okay, but you broke forty for the first broke time. Broke forty so for the first yeah, time. Yeah, for nine holes breaking forty is like yeah. a big deal. And oh 80, yeah, you yeah. I mean, holes and then 80. I I don't want to brag, but it was on the it was on uh, the old course. So I'm just saying. I, oh, was it? I did my third night, and and it was on the back, and I got out of the road hole okay. bunker and parred the seven. <laughs> okay. What was the the course you were behind us and you chipped in from the weeds? You oh, broke forty that day. Uh, I thought you broke forty that day. I I did, and I cannot remember where that is now. I don't know. That's terrible. Nairn or something. I, like that. Yeah, Nairn. Okay, Nairn. Yeah, it was yeah. Nairn. Yeah. Yep. Because we seen it. We watched. Yeah. You were behind us. Also, I actually chipped in two birdies that yeah. day. Dino's in the weeds are like shocker. He's in the weeds again. <laughs> but what was what was even more shocking is he chipped the bastard in from there. <laughs> That, hey, not much getting there deadly around it. <laughs> exactly. So do you know what a Hollywood handicap is? I do not. What is a Hollywood so handicap? Hollywood handicap is basically the reverse. Somebody who wants to be considered a good player, a low handicap, but they're probably just not really that good a player. And the difference with that, the Hollywood handicaps probably show up more in like golf tournaments, like legitimate tournaments. Uh. So for example, <laughs> I can be playing, I can shoot my 75 or whatever it is, mm -hmm. and I can play with my buddies. I can shoot 75, 78, 72, whatever it is, and I record my score. Well. Little did I mention, or when you record a score or you put it in the software, in the app, that 75 or whatever score it was, you were probably raking a four-footer for par. You were bumping your lie here. Yeah. Oh, you kicked it, foot wedged it over here. <laughs> All of a sudden, you get in a tournament where everything has to be putted out. Everything has to be played down. Uh, you everything get your, has to be. You get your ass worked. Is <laughs> yeah, what exactly. You get your ass worked. All of a sudden, that 75 <laughs> turns into an 87. Yep. <laughs> Real oh, quick. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, it's so, I mean, that's even more... I mean, there's a lot less Hollywood handicaps, for example, than there is just, you know, handicap. We call them sandbagger. Well, again, I mean, the game's built on honor, right? Mm -hmm. You talked about it, putting your scores in. Yeah. Uh, out on the course is the same thing. I mean, you can come in. Oh, yeah, shot a 76. Okay, how many times did you improve your lie? How many times, you know, did you give yourself a three-footer or a four-footer? And don't lie to yourselves. Everyone's missed them. We've oh, all missed them. Shoot. We've all missed two footers. I've um, missed one footers in <laughs> tournaments before, like yeah. literally. I mean, so again, as much as you don't think it, oh, it's a three footer. I, you know, oh, it's the, my favorite, right? It's inside the leather. I just give it to myself. You got to play that stuff out, man. That's a whole different oh, game, 100% man. Oh, it is. I whole got a story for game. you. Um, I played in a, as Eagle Glen. It was a state qualifier. It was a Michigan amateur qualifier. The second hole. At Eagle Glen is a par five. It's a big kind of like slight dog leg left, and it's the green is up on a hill. Yeah. For whatever reason, they had the green, some damage to it or whatever, so they had a temporary green 
So the, the green, it was still considered, actually, they, I think they considered a par four because they moved the green up, in. up so, so much closer. But the green was down, you know, 40 yards away from the green, kind of right down in front where the fairway was. And it's just a closely mown, you know, a temporary green, basically. Sure. And it, we played a qualifier tournament there. It was the second hole. I parred the first. Second hole, I get in there, hit my first one, get down there. I got to I tap it in. Or not, sorry, I didn't tap it in. I, ha I was on the green. I had a birdie putt maybe 30 feet. I lagged it to about maybe eight to ten inches. I missed it. Oh, no. <laughs> I freaking, and I can't. I would love to blame it was temporary green. And I was like, no, I just missed it. I like literally just kind of lazily think, you know, for whatever reason, I just kind of nope. All of a sudden, I don't even think I hit the hole. I don't even know. I was, I was like, well, did that just happen? I like oh. end up getting bogey. It was just something stupid. The, uh, you go online. I actually just saw this the other day. Um, a pro playing same thing about a foot you know how they walk up and they just kind of tap yeah. it he just taps it it rims and comes right back out to it was eight six inches further than yeah, his original exactly. plot. It, it was funny to watch it and he was like totally astonished uh -huh. like looking at it going what just happened well i, I, I mean there is a big difference between tournament golf oh. or just any type of golf where yeah. you have to play every single <clears throat> rule ball down sure. can't do this can't rake a three four footer and oh. just buddy golf or just casual golf. We yourself. always tell each other. I mean, it's like if you have this really nasty lie or what. It's like, man, just bump that thing out and hit. You go and you start playing, like you said, in yeah. tournaments or even playing for money. I mean, if you're going to go play with your buddies for money, it's like, all right, now you should be playing your shots a little bit more honest, right? We play it as it lies. Oh yeah, when um, you're playing for money, whether it's five or ten dollars, uh, even or whatever. It even is. your buddies. I mean, that's a different ball game then, man. Yeah. When you start We're putting jerks each other. Yeah, you start putting a little money on line, it's like, oh, what are you doing with that? And then it's like you, you lag it up to like maybe three foot, two and a half foot. Yeah. And you start looking around and nobody says anything. <laughs> no, nobody says it's, it's good. It's quiet. Yep, exactly. Yeah. My, and then I always take a little extra time to reach for the coins. Like, is anybody going to say this is good? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Jesus. My, I have a great uh, uh, story about that. My father-in-law's favorite is always like he'll hit that thing and he'll be, like you said, a couple yeah. foot. And he'll be standing there waiting and he's staring around. He goes, he says, well, you some bitches got laryngitis or what? <laughs> exactly. Hey, we didn't we didn't hear the little. We didn't I didn't hear, hear the cup. bottom of the cup. Yeah, so. we didn't hear it. So yeah, I mean, handicaps in general yeah. are definitely the best way. It's more more potential than average, hundred yeah. percent. Sure. It's not. I mean, obviously, and I don't even know. I can be naive about this. How an actual? I mean, I know what a bowling average is, but is it? Is that completely just your average, right? I, I think so. Yeah. I don't okay. know. I, I, I mean, guess we're going to have to let the bowlers yeah. tell us. Yeah, somebody tell us how that <laughs> yeah, works. Exactly. I mean, the other thing, too, you know, um, handicaps can help the game move. Right? Oh, I mean, I, yeah, they, yeah. I mean, if you get to a certain point in a hole and it's like, you know, you have your handicaps for the hole, if you hit that number, you sh technically could pick up and move on from there because, look, you're maxed out, right? There's yeah. what's – do you want to have to – okay, par three, if it's plus five, you're going to get – once you get to eight, do you really want to keep playing that par exactly. three? Exactly. I do the handicap system in general too actually allows just like the different tees allows sure. for different levels. It's not like you can play basketball or like we've we've say this yeah. all the time or any other sports that you can I can actually play against somebody who's a lot higher handicap, sure. different age, whatever. And we can play in a match that's fair yeah. if we have legitimate handicaps. We do it in our buddy our you know, our yeah, our, our guys trip every yeah. year. I mean it's handicapped out system, and yeah. I mean I I can go compete. Well, sometimes I can go compete. Yeah. But like yeah, if you you know, it's put there for a reason. Again, it just makes the game more enjoyable because you and I can compete yeah. against each other. You know, going to this next hole, you're gonna you're giving me a stroke on yep. this hole, this hole, this hole, this hole. It makes the game more enjoyable. Again, and it moves, keeps it moving. So, in a match play situation, for anybody who doesn't really understand handicaps too much for any like beginner golfers or anything that's kind of wondering, so Dino, I could play if I'm like a let's just say I'm a zero handicap, and Dino is a ten. So if or I'm more. a zero, or actually, more. let's say nine. Let's say nine. I'm a zero and you're a nine. That means if we play each hole, nine of the holes of the 18 holes, if we play an 18 hole match, he will get a stroke on, meaning if he gets a five and I get a four on that same hole, we tie, we tie. on one yep. of the stroke holes. But if, if we come to another stroke hole and you're getting a stroke and I, have, I get a five and you get a five, you beat me because you I, get the stroke on the I, hole. That's my handicap. Yeah. Yep. So that's what makes it fun sure. and fair and a good match. Oh, yeah. We always know it's like, and it's one of those bargaining things. It's like, hey, I'll give you five on the yeah. front, but then I'll be like, okay, if you beat me on the front, I'm only We're, giving you this many on the back. Done, and or, that's happened. I mean, exactly. it, it, adjustments are appropriate. <laughs> right. Because exactly. like, I might be having the game of my life and you might not be playing that well that right. day and it make adjustments to it. But again, 
it makes the game enjoyable. It, you know, I can go out and compete with a handicap with you. If you and I are going to play heads up, it's a waste of my time. I'll just carry your bag, let you <laughs> hit. It'll be easier. It's like because if two I'm going to try, quit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I take my two weeks off. Because if I'm going to try and play with you, it, it's not going to happen. So, but I mean, that's what's fun. I mean, that's that, sure. that's what the handicap system is in place for. And then when they do have, it's called a net event or handicapped event, yeah. which is great. I mean, obviously there's other you know qualifiers, sure. certain levels that are going to be just straight up, but. Handicap events are the handicap systems there for a reason. Yeah, it speeds the game along. And and also one other thing before we finish up, when you do a handicap, when you actually record handicaps in your net system, there's something called equitable stroke control, which basically means for like a certain level, like a lower uh, single digit handicap for me, for example, once I get if it's a par four, once I get to a six, if I'm just shagging it around, I pick up. I can only put a six on my card yeah. because of my handicap. Yeah. Now, Dino, for example, he might be a, a double digit, 11 or 12. He has a equitable stroke control of three over par. So mine's two over, his is three over. So you can still record a triple bogey and put it on, but you can't record a quad, quadruple five. or anything yep. higher. So you have to write down a certain score. Like even if sure. you're making a 10 on a par five or something or four, mm -hmm. it's still only going to be a seven or an eight. We use that actually in our league. Okay, yeah, uh, we go. use that yep. in our league. It, right. It's a max number. Yep. And exactly. you shut it down uh, again. We do that for specific reasons. One, keep move, keep keep yeah. play moving. Um, it, it helps a lot as much as you think. Yeah, like, exactly. Um, and again, you don't brutalize people. It, it keeps the game. You know, they're going to come to their score at the end of it. And we know it's not probably necessarily 100% the yeah, truth, exactly. but but still, you get to the point that you're just brutalizing people. It, it <laughs> right. I mean, you are. I know. Do, do you want to have someone go out there and watch somebody hit a 10, you know, on a par four, hit a 10? No. no. I mean, you just don't want to see that. And again, we're all hanging out there kind of watching this person knock the ball around, and you're going, yeah, we got, like, groups behind us waiting. It's like, yeah. Keep well, it moving, boys. Move, keep it moving, boys. Equitable stroke control. That is our friend. Yeah. Not for golf. Equitable stroke, stroke control is a thing, and we like it. <laughs> <laughs> highly, highly recommend. Highly recommend. Hey, hey, hey start, start taking, uh, you know, watching your scores and be honest and truthful. Give yourself, get yourself uh, a handicap. Mm -hmm. Go out there and look, guys. You can look at this from a, as a baseline and look where you were to where you are. Yeah, exactly. Use it. I mean, there's a lot of things again that you that that you can use this to do and like gin golf for example gin or gin i don't even know how you pronounce yeah. it exactly but their app and software i mean they you just plug your number and they're doing it for you they're yeah. doing all the calculations yeah, you, you don't have I to do anything 20 for 20 or 30 bucks for the beer maybe uh, it, yeah i mean you do nothing for that you just punch in scores yep exactly and i know that you, you know um so i i highly recommend it even for this yeah, anybody yeah. the weekend swing guy like yeah. you know out there hacking away put it in there see where you know help help uh, watch your, your game and see where you went, where you were, and where you are. Use it as your baseline to try and improve. Yep, data. It's just data. It's improvement by the numbers. Yep. All right, so we just wanted to get on here and do a little episode on uh, the handicaps and what they meant and what they, you know, what they are to the game and, you know, what we think about them. So, you know. Hey, from the greatest handicap guy I know. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> exactly. All right, MFers, we'll see you soon. Later, right, MFers. Thanks, everyone, for sticking around and hearing what we had to blab about here at Playing Through. And remember, if you want to become an official MFR, please like and subscribe.